Well, the opening night of the GOP convention in Milwaukee was to focus on economic issues. Uh, but that left some conservatives scratching their heads at some of the speakers that were in the lineup. Now, this follows last week's disappointing platform decisions, which included backing away from pro-life language recognized in the platform for over 40 years. Now, the question is, is there reason to be concerned, or should you just kind of join the party and go along? Well, joining me now to discuss this is author and commentator Ali Beth Stuckey. She's the host of Relatable on Blaze TV and the author of the forthcoming book, Toxic Empathy, How Progressives Exploit Christian Compassion. I wanted to get your thoughts. We were talking about the platform. You've expressed concerns about it. I was on the platform committee. I was not happy with it. When you take that, especially on the life issue, which has been a bridge for many evangelicals into the political process, uh, the Republican Party in particular, when you take that in conjunction with some of the, the speakers that we're seeing at the convention, is there a reason to be concerned or are we just making something out of nothing? Yeah, I think that there is a really good reason to be concerned. It's certainly not nothing. At the same time, we understand that the Republican Party, that the RNC is a secular institution. It doesn't necessarily have to follow all of our doctrines. But I think that we have a reason to ask, what influence do evangelicals really have over the Republican Party at this point? Have we become, as I heard someone say recently, the cheap date of the Republican Party? And metaphorically, you buy them a couple of drinks and there it goes. And you don't really need to buy for our vote at all. You don't have to give us anything. As long as you are a couple inches to the right of Biden, we have no option but to vote for you, or at least that's how a lot of people feel. That's not a great position to be in. If the president feels like he needs to buy for the votes of someone like Amber Rose and whoever follows her, more than he needs to vie for the vote of evangelical pro-lifers, then we're in a very, a, a very dangerous position. I would say not just for the party, but for the country. So, Ali, let me ask you this. You've I mentioned a moment ago, you've got your finger on the pulse of young evangelical voters and especially, especially young mothers. What are you hearing? Yes. You know what? Right now, I think it's really disheartening for a lot of pro-lifers like me, a lot of moms who, for some, even though they're, I mean, every issue, really, I am first a Christian on, but then also a conservative on. And so it's not only the abortion issue for me, although that's the most important issue for me. And I would say that's true for a lot of women, especially more apolitical women. They're thinking, I don't really know everything about all the other issues, but I know abortion is wrong. And so if they are looking at the tickets right now and they're looking at three essentially pro-choice options, then either they could feel apathetic about voting for anyone. They're just not quite as mobilized as they should be, or they could cast their vote for a third party. I'm not saying that that's the right decision for them, but I have heard that mentality. Okay, if I'm looking at three pro-choice candidates, why should I pick this Republican ticket? Um, I'm not saying that's going to sway the direction of the election, but I think that he would do better to care about that vote than the vote of, say, someone who is following Amber Rose. You mentioned it, and I've said this myself, the, the, the Republican Party is a secular political institution. It's not a church. Um, but as Christians, and we're Christian first, those who follow Christ, follow the, the teaching of Scripture, we're Christian first. And we, we seek those in that affiliation with that which most clearly aligns with the, the Scripture. But we've had clear contrasts in the, in the past. But as you point out, as they become more muddled, it makes that decision a little more difficult in terms of who to engage with. Yes, exactly. I mean, and everyone has to think about this for themselves. At what point do you decide as a Christian that you are rewarding the compromise of the Republican Party by giving them your vote, no matter how far to the left they go? At the same time, I don't believe in being politically disengaged. And right now we basically do have a binary system and you are deciding between 
uh, White House, Biden and Harris, who will do everything possible to make abortion easier, to make it easier for authorities to take a child out of their parents' home because the parent won't go along with gender ideology. And then you've got a potential White House, Trump Vance, who will not do those things. I don't think they think they're going to make it easier for a woman to get a, an abortion. I certainly don't think they're going to be on the side of gender ideology. So yes, that's better. And everyone has to wrestle in their yeah. contents about what that looks like for them. Yeah, it, 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 the, the clearer the contrast, the better, but it's gonna take some thinking yeah. and some praying, uh, but by all means, everyone needs to vote. Uh, Allie Beth Stuckey, always great to talk with you. Thanks so much for uh, for joining us today. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, and thanks for your strength.